The Dark Saber. An ancient black bladed lightsaber created by the first and only Mandalorian Jedi sometime before 1019 BBY. The weapon is respected by all Mandalorians and is a symbol for the leadership of House Vizsla, the Death Watch and Mandalore. But where did it come from? Who was its creator? And where is it now? Today, we'll discover all of this. So sit back, relax and have some dark coffee. Who is writing this? I mean, R2-D2 has told better jokes than this and no one can understand what he says. Fine, 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 I don't care what it is. Welcome to Star Wars Timelines. During the era of the Old Republic and before the Hundred Year Darkness, there was a Mandalorian called Tar Vizsla, a human male who, as a child, was inducted into the Jedi Order becoming the first and only Mandalorian to do so. As a Jedi, he created the Dark Saber, a unique black covered lightsaber. There has never been another black lightsaber such as this one, and whether or not he gathered the crystal on Ilum or some other crystal cave remains unknown. What we do know is the Dark Saber became the symbol for the leadership of House Vizsla, and prior to his death, Tar became Mandalore, leader of the Mandalorian people. After Vizsla died, the saber was kept in the Jedi Temple as most lightsabers are. However, during the fall of the Old Republic, members of the House Vizsla broke into the temple and stole the weapon. They used it to unite Mandalore, and despite Tar being in the Jedi, the Mandalorians, especially those of House Vizsla, held no love towards the Order. They waged war on the Jedi, and the Darksaber was used to kill many of its Order's members. Eventually, when the Republic defeated the Mandalorians, the Mandalorian people turned to pacifism in order to survive. However, many of the old clans, including Clan Vizsla, refused to give up their warrior ways. As such, after a Mandalorian civil war, they were banished to Concordia. The exiled people took the lightsaber with them. Following their exile, most of the former warriors died out on the moon. However, the survivors regrouped and formed the Death Watch. They found that one day, they would return the Mandalorian people to their former warrior ways and become a symbol of fear once again. Eight years after the invasion of Naboo, the Confederacy of Independent Systems began to take shape after the former Jedi turned Sith Lord Count Dooku formed the Separatist movement. In 22 BBY, the Clone Wars began, and the Republic used its newly created clone army to battle the droid armies of the Separatists. During this time, the Dark Sith became into possession of Pre Vizsla, the governor of Concordia and secret leader of the Death Watch. The Death Watch then planned to overthrow the Mandalorian leader, Duchess Satine, and reclaim Mandalore. At the start of the Clone Wars, rumours began to spread that Satine was building an army to fight for the Separatists after a terrorist attack on a Jedi cruiser was carried out. This attack was carried out by a man wearing Mandalorian armour. The Mandalorian warrior was killed during the attack, so with no answers, the Jedi Council sent Obi-Wan Kenobi to Mandalore to investigate. Upon arrival, Satine received Obi-Wan and assured him that they had nothing to do with the attack and that it was most likely the work of the Death Watch. Satine and the other Mandalorians were aware of this group and had tracked them to the moon of Concordia. During Obi-Wan's visit, a terrorist attack went off at the Memorial Shrine. Kenobi discovered and confronted the bomber, but the bomber killed himself before they could get any answers. Satine and Kenobi then travelled to Concordia where they met the governor, Pre Vizsla, who was secretly the leader of the Death Watch. Obi-Wan carried out an investigation while Satine stayed with Vizsla. However, he was captured by the Death Watch and imprisoned in a mine. Satine travelled to the mine in secret and managed to rescue him. However, as they were trying to escape, they were confronted by more warriors, and Vizsla unmasked himself as leader of the Death Watch. It was at this moment Vizsla pulled out the Dark Saber and a duel between Kenobi and Vizsla broke out. Though he had skill, Vizsla was unable to defeat Kenobi or prevent his escape with Satine. It later transpired that Vizsla was working with Dooku in order to dethrone Satine and reclaim Mandalore. However, the plot was foiled and Dooku abandoned the warriors. After being abandoned, the Death Watch had no choice but to abandon the moon and make for Karlak in the Outer Rim territories. In 22 BBY, the Death Watch began a plot to take revenge on Dooku for betraying them. They enlisted Lux Bonteri, the son of former Separatist Senator Mina Bonteri, who had been killed in the Clone Wars by Count Dooku, and together they hatched a plan. After he got Dooku's exact location, 
Lux travelled to Karlak, but with an unexpected guest, Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka had no idea of Lux's true intentions, including travelling to meet the Death Watch or about the plot to kill Dooku, and had planned to take Lux to Coruscant. However, Lux stunned her and travelled to Karlak instead, and met with Pre Vizsla. Upon landing, the two were taken to the Death Watch camp. Ahsoka pretended to be Lux's traveling companion. And when they got alone, Lux told Ahsoka about the plan and informed her that he planned to join Death Watch. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that at that. During the evening celebrations, Ahsoka and Lux discovered that the Death Watch had enslaved the native Ming Po town women. The chieftain interrupted the celebrations and demanded the Death Watch return the women. Pre Vizsla agreed. However, the next morning, when Death Watch arrived at the town with Ahsoka and Lux to return the women, Vizsla killed the chieftain's granddaughter with the Darksaber and ordered his warriors to destroy the town and the people. Ahsoka revealed herself as a Jedi and engaged Vizsla, who used the Darksaber against her and managed to defeat and capture the Padawan. At this point, Lux became aware of the Death Watch's true nature and freed Ahsoka and together they escaped. But once again, instead of going to Coruscant with Ahsoka, Lux abandoned her and snuck away in an escape pod. With their position compromised after Ahsoka's escape, the Death Watch once again moved their base to Zanbar, where they discovered the newly reborn Darth Maul and his brother Savage Opress. Vizsla agreed to an alliance between the Death Watch and Maul's Shadow Collective in order to reclaim Mandalore. Vizsla travelled with Maul to Nal Hutta, where he used the Darksaber against the Huts. They then forced Jabba to agree to their alliance. With the Black Sun as an army, the Shadow Collective attacked Mandalore in a staged assault. Vizsla and the Death Watch then stepped in in order to perform a staged protection and defeat of the Collective's forces. Thanks to their efforts, the Death Watch was hailed as heroes, and with the support of the people, Vizsla imprisoned Satine and claimed the position of the leader of Mandalore. Vizsla then betrayed Maul and Savage Opress and had them imprisoned, although they quickly escaped because they're Sith, and Maul challenged Vizsla for the leadership of the Death Watch. The two entered a fierce duel, with Vizsla using the Darksaber against Maul, who used his own lightsaber. Even though he fought well, he was ultimately no match for the Sith Lord, and Vizsla was disarmed and defeated. Maul then used the Darksaber to execute him, and with that, pre Vizsla, heir to the House Vizsla and leader of the Death Watch, was dead. Probably the shortest person who was in charge of Mandalore for the shortest amount of time. Didn't, didn't, didn't last more than a few hours. If that probably didn't last more than an hour. Maul claimed the Darksaber and the title of the leader of Death Watch and Mandalore. A group of the Death Watch's members, led by Bo Katine Kreese, refused to follow Maul and betrayed him. She would then come to aid the Republic in the fight against Darth Maul at the Siege of Mandalore. Maul then held the lightsaber for many years, using it to kill many people, including the former Duchess Satine, who he executed in front of Obi Wan Kenobi. He used it in his fight against Darth Sidious and during the Siege of Mandalore. Even though Maul lost Mandalore during the siege, he held onto the Darksaber after escaping Republic captivity. Years later, during the Age of the Empire, Maul retreated and set up base on Dathomir, where he kept the Darksaber in the Night Sister Lair. It was eventually taken from the Lair by Sabine Wren, a Mandalorian who joined the Rebellion to fight the Empire, as well as Kanan Jarrus, a Jedi survivor, and Ezra Bridger, Kanan's apprentice. Sabine entrusted Kanan to keep the lightsaber, as she was hesitant to use it herself. Fen Rao, a Mandalorian protector who also joined the Rebellion, was shown the lightsaber by Kanan, where he gave a history lesson to Kanan on the saber. Fen Rao and Sabine then set out to fight a Mandalorian worthy of wielding it, and reuniting the Mandalorian clans. At first, it was thought Sabine would do this, however ultimately she refused. After defeating Imperial Viceroy Gar Saxon, Sabine liberated Clan Wren and began a Mandalorian revolution against the Empire. After teaming up with Bo-Katan and successfully destroying the Star Destroyer, watching over Mandalore, as well as a super weapon that would have been used against the Mandalorians, Sabine gave the Darksaber to Bo-Katan. The other clans then pledged their allegiance to her, and she became the new Mandalore. Years later, sometime before 9 ABY, some kind of Mandalorian purge had occurred, leaving very few Mandalorian survivors. The Darksaber had been acquired by the Imperial called Moff Gideon. And that, my friends, is all we have for the Darksaber so far. 
Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.